Ähm. Um, today our goal. Let me magnify this a bit. Um. Today our goal is basically um, learn the Jacobi, learn the encapsulated Jacobi equation in a function. And what we want to do then is then um, write down the Jacobi equation and analyze its convergence, like uh, exactly what we do with uh, um, our um, like right here. Okay. Um. First, let me run. Let me um, let me introduce this homework two. Um, this is homework two. Um, it's already available on GitHub. All right. Um, for example, it has a get matrix function. Um, in fact, it generates the function for us. Let me uh, let me show you guys how to use it. Um, magnify this a little bit. Um, for example, um, first we import it from homework, uh, homework two, whoops, import everything. All right. Uh, but we, we also want to import, import numpy as an Simple numpy as one MP. All right. Um, what this get matrix does is uh, it, it generates a matrix for us. For example, uh, we have this A get matrix. Um, it generates a matrix for us. Like for example, if we let n equals five, uh, it generates a five by five matrix for us. But I do wanna I, I do wanna um, I do wanna mention that this A is a sparse matrix because I want to save storage. Um, if you guys go into the industry or go to grad school and learn uh, linear solver, you will find people um, save this in the sparse matrix format. It's called compressed uh, sparse row format, okay? Uh, or CSR in, in short. If you Google CSR, you you, you get uh, uh you get this. Um, so if you type A, um, let me let me put this uh, um, back. Uh, Um, if we type this rate A right here, uh, we find that uh, it tells us A is a five by five sparse matrix. If we want to show A, um, we can do something like the following. Um, A has a method called two array. If we type A dot and two array right here, it, it shows right here. So with two array, and it converts A back to the uh, array format of NumPy, right here. All right, so um, something like this. Um, it's not exactly that, it's more like two times this matrix. But let, let's just uh, keep it uh, right now uh, for the implementation in the homework too. I will update this uh, PDF, by the way. Um, let's just keep A like this um, to make our life easier. Okay. And what happens is we wanna we wanna generate a random generate a random vector as the solution. This is building a toy box model. For example, our X true solution is we can uh, invoke MP random module. 
So we have a random right here. It's a random number generation. So random. Uh, we do random. Let's do random. Okay. So this generates a random number of like five. So this gets us a um, X true. This gives us a random number of uh, uh, five dimension. This is like a, a random number. Um, this is our true solution. And how we build up uh, the right, right, I'm sorry, right hand side B is instead of uh, we set up B, we solve for X. We first, we set a toy model X. We use A multiply with as X, we get B. So for example, this B um, is right here. All right. And now what we want to do is we want to implement um, Jacoby, but we want to use we want to use the helper function. We want to use the helper function uh, from homework two. Uh, we, we don't want to like uh, use a for loop every time um, like demonstrated in previous lecture. So in homework two, this pi file, um, so I think this is unused. Let me comment that out this. But, uh, um, in this file right here, we have a get aux matrix, uh, this function. If, how do we use it is pretty straightforward. Um, what we can do is, because it returns, if we check the return, it returns three things. So Python's syntax is quite, I would say quite nice for this type of return. We return multiple output, then we can just put DLU equals get aux matrix of A. All right. So first of all, I want to first say that the D is actually an array. D is an array. Why D is an array? Because in in the um, in the um, how would I say it? in the um, actual like uh, um, implementation, even though D is a diagonal matrix, but only the diagonal is non-zero. We don't have to say represent it as a full matrix. We just represent its diagonal. For example, this D is an array. It's a five array. This represents the diagonal entry, only the diagonal entry of this uh, uh, matrix A. As we can compare A to array, uh, let me print it. As we can see, the diagonal entry is one, 2.25, 2.25, 2.25, one. As we can see, this is the uh, diagonal entry of A, correct? And similarly, we can we can check U and uh, we can check U and uh, uh, and L. This is this is L and uh, um, and this is U. Oops. U is an upper triangular matrix, and uh, L is a lower triangular matrix. So we can uh, implement Gauss side. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jacobi method. What I want to do is first we set up, for example, total number of iteration. And uh, a good coding habit is uh, for every parameter we set, we add a comment besides it. For example, we say number of iteration is 200. We say this is total number of iterations. All right. And then we can also 
um, initialize our x because this time, if we want to plot convergence, if we want to plot convergence, first let's read. Uh, uh, there is a helper file. There is a helper file in um, homework two dot pi, which is plotting the convergence of how fast um, this method converges to the true solution. For example, the first input is the true solution. The sex second input is the iterates, or say the collection of iterates. Um, for example, this X here is actually a matrix. In each row right here, each row stores, uh, let me, uh, let me add a new line. And uh, x0 is the uh, initial guess, all right? So what happens is we want to store our initial guess. For example, uh, we first we initialize this x. So if we want to use initialize, we can use numpy zeros. And the shape is the number of rows is total number of iterations we have. All right, this is a, a number of rows. And the number of columns is the dimension of this problem. For example, if the dimension of this problem is five, then we just put five here. All right. Or more general, we want to put, for example, we want to put a, um, a shape zero. Um, if we type a shape, it just gets us the dimension. For example, if a is a five by five matrix, this returns five by five, five by five. And this is a tuple. Um, all right. And now we can uh, we can run our Jacobi iteration. For example, x zero is our initial guess. Uh, I mean, we, we can just uh, use zero initial guess and leave it like uh, as it as it was. Um, so, for example, we can we can either we can add a new variable here and dim is a shape zero and we replace this a shape zero with uh, n dim and we put n dim here all right so this is our initial guess but uh, uh this line is redundant because our initial guess is already initialized as a zero so we can comment out this this is just an explanation of uh, uh initial guess all right and now for um in our iteration um, the kth iteration, for example, in k, in um, range, total number of uh, iterations. Uh, all I want to do is we just apply um, the Jacobi, me uh, Jacobi method. Here, I want to uh, give you guys a trick of Jacobi method. Um, for example, a diagonal matrix multiply with the vector is the same as diagonal matrix multiply of vector is the same is actually the same thing as uh, um, um, the diagonal entry vector multiply so this is a matrix multiplication, matrix multiplication, matrix vector multiplication. And it's actually the diagonal entry vector multiply with a vector element wisely. This actually greatly, greatly um, like uh, make the storage smaller. Um, as a coder, or say, uh, scientific computer um, this is this is pretty important when we are, uh, when our problem grows like a millions of entry and storage wise it's much better in which means we uh, we store one matrix less and now we just uh, 
apply Jacoby. So k plus one uh, equals. And uh, what we have here is first we uh, multiply L plus U with this XK theta rate. We have L plus U multiply with uh, XK. And then this vector, this vector, we just multiply with D. All right, keep this in mind, D is, D is a vector representing the diagonal entries. So this this is some implementation trick, but uh, um, but our method is still uh, in in it's like intact. I'm sorry. Uh, this should be D inverse. So it's if it's if it's D inverse, it's nothing but divided by D. So divide division here means element wise division. So for example, if I have a is numpy array um, one three let me use two three um, and uh, let's say c is numpy array um, four ten all right so a divided by c is element wise division we get a two length two vector. Two is divided by four and three is divided by 10. Right here, all right? Which means this line of code right here is exactly um, right here. In, in this way, we don't have to compute matrix inverse or we don't have to store uh, uh, a matrix. We just... Uh, store diagonal entry as vectors and same thing happens here b divided by d All right and now that that's it <laughs> this is uh, iteration so what happens is uh if we run this cell um it takes a while but oh i got an array oh my bad it says uh, index 200 is out of bounds. Okay. Uh, if number of iteration is 200, I should uh, put uh, this. Okay, my bad. Okay, we're good. And if we take a sneak peek of uh, first five rows of what X is like, we can we can see. This is the initial guess. And after the initial guess, we have something like that. And now we just use the helper function. Uh, the helper function right here, plot convergence. Um, for example, x true, uh, we got it. And uh, um, we have our x. And there's a there's a um, there is an optional parameter here. By default, it's uh, it means we compute the error in two norm um, and the scale is log um, by default it means we compute our er we first compute our error in log uh, in in l2 norm and then we take log um, we can also let this k to be infinity so let me let me show it but uh, let's first plot convergence Sorry, my laptop is uh, like uh, seven years old. And so uh, it's quite old. As we can see, um, here is the convergence. This is in log scale, by the way. And why it's reaching uh, this uh, flat, it, it means it doesn't converge anymore because it converge it, it already, the precision, the error reaches like uh, 
the smallest possible number the computer can represent. Okay. Um, this is like already zero because the computer uh, can't represent a smaller number than that. It 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 doesn't tell the difference between that number and zero, um, and it's called a machine epsilon. Um, but uh, the computer just doesn't tell the error after let's say seven something iteration. Um, and now if we change this to linear scale, we can get a more um, so I believe it's scale. Uh, let's change k equals, I forgot why it says plot convergence is not here. Scale equals linear. All right, this is like the linear scale. As we can see, first a few iterations, and let me, let me plot only uh, first five iterations. As we can see, initially, uh, it converges very fast, I would say, then slows down. For example, if we see, um, if we plot first uh, um, 10 iterations, uh, we can see that the error decreases very fast initially and then slows down, All right? Um, and if we take log, it's a straight line. Um, I do believe Jacobi method converges sublinearly for this for this question. We can verify by uh, comparing uh, this number. If we want to compare this number, maybe we we'll want to print. For example, we want to print. So we want to compare this difference for each uh, uh, for each iteration. This is the rate of convergence, by the way. Um, it's, the, it's the same rate of convergence we learned in module one. The only difference is we, we change this rate of convergence from absolute value. Originally, we have absolute value here, absolute value here, absolute value here, absolute value here. In module two, we replace every absolute value by norm. That's it. Uh, and we want to print the uh, the norm. How do we get norm is, uh, let me show you guys uh, the import. For example, we import, so NumPy has a, actually a built-in norm function. So uh, it's in the linear algebra sub-module. So NumPy linear algebra, um, import norm. Why it's, uh, oh, sorry, it should be from, my bad. So from this uh, module, we import norm. And uh, um, so for example, if we want to compute a norm, we just, we just literally call the norm function. So for example, the norm of, uh, um, as we can see here, the matrix or vector norm, uh, normally we use it for computing vector norm. Because uh, for matrix, we want to specify axis, which is kind of confusing. We don't want to do that. Here, we want to compute the norm of, uh, of, uh, of x, k plus 1, subtract our true solution. Which means we want to compute the norm of x, k plus 1, subtract um, x true. And then this number divided by x k subtract x true. All right. Now, if we do this at each iteration, let, let's print like every ten iteration. Okay. So if if k um, divided by ten uh, is zero. Um, let's print this, okay? So uh, this means we, we just print uh, uh, every 10 iterations. We don't want to print a message every iteration. Uh, so let's run this cell of code. And as we can see here, 
Um, this 1.0 means uh, it, it's already reach, reaching machine Epsilon. But uh, this 0.62 right here, the 0.62 something something, this is the rate of convergence. This is the rate of convergence right here. This 1.0 is because we already reached like a machine Epsilon um, error. So um, 1.0 after 80-ish uh, iterations is because uh, we have reached error of uh, machine Epsilon level. Um, because, for example, Python um, does not tell the difference. For example, let me show you guys. Um, NumPy, uh, my bad. Um, for example, NumPy array, if I do 1e minus 20, um, 1e minus 20 d types. Um, D type is, let's say, uh, float. Mm. Okay, why it's automatically converting it to float 64? Let me try this. Um, Type A zero. Yeah, why it's automatically converting to flow sixty four? Let me try this. Um, let me try NP. Okay, let me try um, flow sixteen. As we can see, it doesn't tell the difference between this number and this number because if we use MP flow 16, this number cannot be represented, use only 16 digits of binary. That's a reason. So I'm adding uh, a uh, some error here. Um, for example, this number must be really, really small and uh, um, Python cannot tell the difference of this number between this number after 80 iterations. That's a reason, all right? Okay, and then now we, we're ready to encapsulate this whole routine into a function. And what we wanna do is, for example, we wanna define Jacobi uh, iteration. Um, and our input, so our input should have matrix A, right hand side B, our initial guess. If the user does not want initial guess, that's fine. So, but we, we, we still can initialize it. For example, we let it to be non-type. It means we don't have to give this function x0, this function can still like uh, functions. Um, and we set the total number of iterations. By default, we give it a 200, okay, I'll say 100. And normally we write functions, like in homework two, um, because we, we want our function to be readable, normally we write a comment. This is a three quotation mark. Um, Um, and this is Jacobi iteration. Um, and, uh, um, and the input A is A the matrix. Let's say M by M matrix. And B is uh, an, an N vector. Okay. Uh, why I'm using this notation is because if we check B, uh, B is this vector, right? If we check B's shape, it's five, nothing. 
Um, this is a Python way of representing the dimension of uh, a vector. And x0 is our initial guess. Okay. And, uh, um, and of course, number of iteration is our uh, total number of iterations. And of course, we need to have a return. It returns the solution, it returns x, and x is a solution array such that xi is the ith iterate. All right. Um, so for example, we first in this function, we want to get uh, what is our dimension. For example, we let n equals a shape zero. This is our n. And uh, we initialize our x. x should equals mp zeros. Um, the, the row is total number of iterations. Um, and the column is, is m. All right. And if the user gives us an initial guess, we want to set the initial guess to be that number. So if x0 is not a noun, um, we let our initial guess, which is 0 theta rate, equals x0. Okay. Otherwise, we just keep um, this vector in touch. Like uh, we just don't change the initial guess. We, we choose 0 initial guess by default. Um, and now we can just copy down what we have right here. And don't forget the indent, all right? Python will complain. Okay, indent error. As we can see here, L, U, and D is undefined within this function. Before we define it, we have to uh, get d, l, and u equals get ox matrix a. And after the iteration ends, we just return x. Okay. And let's see what happens. Now we let it, that's x to be Jacobi iteration a, b, we just don't give it an X. Let's see what happens. Oop, something's wrong. Let's check what's wrong. Oh, I forgot to change this again. So this should be number of iteration plus one. My bad. Okay. Uh, right now we get an X. For example, X, we check X's shape. This is 101 and five. It means uh, we have, uh, uh, let's say we have a uh, uh, 101 iterate, I'm sorry, 100 iterations, and the first row is our initial guess. Um, and this is uh, dimension five, All right? And let's plot the convergence. Let's plot convergence of x true and x. After 80 iterations, also um, it reaches it reaches uh, um, the error reaches this much. 10 to the negative 14. I believe 10 to the negative 14 is uh, is the smallest can be represented by a float. But let, let me let me let me just verify if because I forgot single uh, precision. Floating point. Uh, okay, the smallest is what? Single precision. Mm. 
Why it doesn't tell me? What is the smallest number representable? All right, forget it. But uh, um, as long as we reach machine epsilon, it stop converges. This is this is normal. This is not error. This is not our algorithm is problematic. It's just the way of computer how the computer is built. Um, now let's test something interesting. Let's increase the matrix size and observe what happens. But before that, uh, let's add a tolerance uh, in our function. That is, if the error is, or say, if the consecutive iterate, this is tolerance. Um, if the difference, um, our algorithm should stop, stops, the iteration stops if um, the next iteration subtract the previous iteration its norm is less than this tolerance, all right? By default, we set the tolerance to be machine epsilon. Let's, because it stops convergence up somewhere here, let's set it to be one E minus three so we can observe um, like uh, the actual convergence because it stops here. It's pointless to go beyond here. So we set the tolerance to be this, this big and we check the tolerance at these uh, iterations. That is, if the norm of xk plus one subtract xk is less than the tolerance. We don't have to continue, we just break, right? And we don't want to return. We don't want to return like everything after. We just want to return everything up to like uh, k plus one point. For example, if we make this change to this function, let's run this iteration again and let's check x's shape. It should it should stop around eighty iterations, I guess. So its shape should be seventy or something. I guess. Okay, 66. So it after 66 iterations, somewhere around here, it reaches our tolerance and the algorithm stops. Uh, if we plot the convergence again, we won't see this line. We won't see this line. Come on, okay, all right. So we observe this is a um, this is a sublinear convergence because this is already in log scale, I believe. Um, all right, and now what's happening is what happens if we increase problem size? For example, we, we had a uh, problem size is five by five. And now let's change, let, let's make a 10 by 10 matrix. So let's make a 10 by 10 matrix. And what happens is, let's let A equals get uh, matrix and N equals 10. Um, and we, we still we still do a random like uh, solution. So x true is um, numpy random random. Okay. And the right hand side is still obtained through a multiply with x true. And now let's test. Let's give it a shot of x, we let x equals Jacobi iterations. Um, Jacobi iterations, we have uh, our new matrix, which is 10, and uh, our new right-hand side, which is b. x0, we, we still, we still like uh, use zero initial guess. Um, and we don't change its tall, but uh, we, we let a maximum number of iteration, let's increase to a thousand. Let's observe what happens. Keep this in mind. 
for the original, uh, the the Jacoby iteration stops after sixty six iteration. If it's sixty, uh, okay, sorry, it stops after sixty five iterations because uh, the first one is uh, uh, initial guess. So it stops after sixty five iterations. So let's observe what happens when we increase the problem size, like by a time. So we multiply the problem size by two. All right, let's see what happens. Um, it's good. And let's check X shape. All right, and and now and now let me let me tell um, let me explain why this is the the, the number. We double the problem size um, from dimension five to dimension ten. However, if you think about uh, the problem size in the matrix, originally we had a five by five matrix, right? But now, if we change it to ten by ten, actually the problem size quadrupled. And the Jacobi iteration right here, the number of iteration needed to reach the same tolerance just is like four times as big, approximately four times as big. We can we can even uh, increase our um, to twenty, and we change this to twenty, and let's uh, increase the maximum number of iterations to be two thousand. Okay. Um, let's see what happens. It may take a while. My computer is kind of slow. Okay, it it grows about three times. It it should be it should be like uh, approximately that it it's like order. Let me let me add an order. So um, let me add a comment. So the number of iterations needed. Is approximately um, order of uh, n square. So this is the theory, and uh, on Monday, um, I mean th this is for today's material. And on Monday, Monday we'll learn uh, why this is the case for this type of matrix. So on Monday we'll learn a bit of finite difference and linear algebra. Um, so that's it for today. And I'll uh, see you guys on Monday. Okay.